you get the hard one. So what's a degree? It's four. Four, okay, and the leading coefficient one. is one. Everyone agree? Okay. Um, now, the third step, Ristim, is to do what? Okay, yeah, yeah. The end behavior, right? End behavior. Did you um, did you write down the chart or no? No. I'll just move on. It's all right. You, you did? Okay. So can you tell from that chart what what we have going on here? Okay, we have even. We have we have that n is even, right? And we have that the leading coefficient is. It is odd, but be careful. What is it that we're concerned about in that chart? Uh, plus or minus. Plus or minus. It's a positive, right? So just be real careful on this because, you know, yes, four, you know, four is positive, but that's not what we care about. We care about the fact that four is even. And then here, yes, the leading coefficient is odd, but we're concerned about whether or not it's positive or negative. So it's like it's two different things you're looking at there. But I think you got it. So what does this tell us? Up on the left, and up, on the right. up on the right, and in the middle, we have no idea, right? At this point, we don't know. Okay, we all good with this? Mm -hmm. Any questions? All right, now the next thing, Luke. What is the next thing, Luke? I forgot. Uh, X -intercepts. The x-intercepts. So we have to do what to find those? Set that equal to zero and factor, right? So I gave you a first problem here that is factorable, right? So I gave you this intentionally because I know it can be factored. Do you want to go for it, Luke? Uh, so X squared. Okay, so GCF first, greatest common factor. You have an X squared in all of these, so that comes out. There it is, X squared. And then, Luke, you're left with what? Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Equals zero. We're going to move on, Luke. Not that I don't think you can do that. I just want to get everyone involved today. Uh, Victor. Okay, so you'd set that to zero. Can we finish factoring? I, I agree. I want to finish factoring this because this can go further, right? So how would you factor this, Victor? Yeah, I think you have, you've done it in the past where you do it like mentally, right? A lot yeah, of this. So like negative 14, you find of exactly. So this is the AC method on this, on these three. Okay. So since we've done that, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write down the next line. Okay. So if you went through the steps, that's that little thing, and then you put negative 14, negative five, find the two numbers, do all that. Yes or no? Yes. Then your next line should read. Not next line, but after you do some work. This should read x minus 7x plus 2, I believe. Yeah. 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 And remember, you could have these backwards. You could, you could re rearrange those. OK? Is everyone clear that that step was AC method? All right. Now, now Victor, no. you want to set each of these equal to 0, right? Yes. So you want to set x squared equal to 0. You want to set x minus 7 equal to 0. And you want to set x plus 2 equal to 0. And Victor, what would be our three answers here? Uh, zero. x is 0. zero. x is 7. x is 7. And x is negative 2. And x is negative 2. Good. All right. We all in business with that? Any questions? Miranda? Uh, so five? five, yeah, let's go for five. So what is five saying we need? Cross yeah, cross or bounce. This is what we're doing now. So this is, the, this is the kind of the new thing. I, we haven't done this yet, right? An example yet? So. When you're looking at this, Miranda, you, when you're determining the cross and bounce, do not look at these numbers. 
These have nothing to do with crossing and bouncing. This is where you're going to cross or bounce, but it doesn't have anything to do about determining which of the two it is. You actually have to look back up at the factored form right here. That's the thing you need to focus your attention on, all right? Do you have an idea of how this is going to go? No? I can keep guiding. So what about this factor right here? This factor x <coughs> is raised to the 2, right? Which is even. So even means bounce. Does I'm going to put a b here for bounce, right? But where do we bounce? At the factor that comes from this. So this tells me that at 0, when I go to draw this, I need to bounce off that 0. OK? You want to keep going? What's the power on this factor? So if it's not there, it's a 1, right? And 1 is odd. And odd means cross, right? So that means that this factor, right, this factor tells me that we will cross here. All right? So we're going to bounce here. We're going to cross here. And then what about the last one? We're going to cross again. It's 1. That's odd. We're going to cross. That means at that x-intercept, we will cross. The biggest mistake that I see on this is that students will look at these numbers to determine bouncing or crossing. They'll be like, oh, 0. 0 is even, so I'm going to bounce. Well, you got lucky, OK? Because look, look at negative 2. Negative 2 is even, right? But we actually cross here. We don't bounce here. So don't look at the numerical values to figure out bounce and cross. Look at the power on the factor. Now, technically, in math classes, we call this the multiplicity of the factor. That's what we're looking at. But I don't care about those terminolo that terminology in here. We're just going to figure out bounce and cross and move on. Yes? OK, uh, good. So this step, this step right here, I actually just did it all within my work. I d didn't write a new step for this, all right? We're ready to move on. Brianna P. Brianna P. Yes. Are you caught up? Yeah. What's the last step, Brianna? To sketch it. To sketch it. OK, so here comes the sketch. And we have not done this yet, right? right? OK, so Brianna, the first thing I want you to put here on your sketch are the x-intercepts. So these are going to be dots on the x-axis. And where do they go? Negative 2, negative 2, put a dot. 0, put a dot. And out here at 7, put a dot. Just make sure you get these in the correct order. Did I move you over? Yeah. So Brianna, we're going to be back in, in, you know, way back in the day connecting dots together here. But now you have to put all this information together. Before you put your pencil on the paper, you need to put all this information together in your head. Your left and right sides need to go up. When you get to, think, imagine you're drawing this from left to right. You, you know that this side has to go up, right? This side has to go up. So it might be worth it for you to just draw real lightly with your pencil that this goes up, real lightly with your pencil that this goes up, OK? Now, Brianna, when we get to negative 2, what are we going to do? We're going to cross through. So can you all see that as we draw this, we're going to get to negative 2, and we're going to cross through and go across the x-axis, yes? But then you have to get back up to 0, right? So you're going to curl back up. And when you get to 0, what are you going to do? Bounce. bounce. So we're going to bounce off that 0. And then we've got to come back down and then get back up to 7. And when we get to 7, cross. cross, and then go through. So can you see it? OK. So come up here and draw it. No, I'm just kidding. I won't make you do that. All right. If, you weren't on, if we weren't on camera, I, I would ask you to come up, but I don't like to put people on camera. There we go. That's it. Does everyone agree that it qualifies everything in our information is, is um, that's the word I'm looking for. I, I can't think of it right now. Sorry. This has all the characteristics that we're supposed to have, right? Now, Brianna, am I going to take off on your, on your exam? Will I take off if you draw it like this? No. No, I will not. What we all have to have in our picture is the correct left and right behavior, the correct x-intercepts, 
and then in between the x-intercepts, we should all have a picture somewhere down here. Between these two x-intercepts, we should have a picture down here. And everything should be curved. What I would take off for is something like this. Straight line segments. This is not a, a polynomial. Polynomials are smooth and curved, OK? Yes? Go ahead. So we're not worrying about the y-intercept? Don't worry about the y-intercept. Nope. Nope. The reason we don't care about the y-intercept is that there's so many things we still don't know. Like, we don't know how low these go, right? So having a y-intercept will give us a little more accuracy, but we're, pre we're still pretty far away from like a really good graph. Our parabolas were really good because they had the vertex, we had the symmetry, we had a lot of points, so we know the parabola, like that was the way it looked. We, we didn't have a piece that was like, oh, well that you know, is, could be anywhere. The parabolas, we were really good at graphing. Lines, we we're great at the graphing, right? Two point straight line, you can't mess that up. Everyone's line's gonna look the same. Everyone's parabola is gonna pretty much look the same. When we start to get to polynomials, everyone's polynomial is going to be a little bit different unless we start bringing in calculus, all right? Okay, now I'm going to bring the computer up because I, I want the computer to show us what the real graph of this is, and we're going to see how good ours is compared to the computer. So what degree? This is a fourth degree polynomial. We had two roots at zero. We had a root at seven. Yeah, and then we had a root where? Negative two. I'm gonna have to zoom out here a little bit. That is the computer's version of the answer, which is very accurate. I mean, that is a very accurate picture. But, you know, there's some problems with the computer's version take out all these other ones here. There's some things about the computer's version I don't like. The thing about the computers that I don't like is that with, with ours, it's, it's very clear what's happening right here between negative two and zero, right? It's very clear here that this thing goes below, right? Here, do you see how that just, I mean, you can tell it goes below, right? But if, I, if my computer is set to graph this a little different, like that, do you see how that's, I changed the window. So do you see it's a little harder to tell here that it dips down below? And if I zoom out even more, it starts to really be difficult to tell where those x-intercepts are, right? So there are some limitations if you're not comfortable with the computer and you can't make it behave the way you need it to behave, then our picture tells us Tells us a lot. And does that mean um, the computer is showing that the, you know, the gap between minus 2 and 0 is like this? The thing, the thing is I'm zooming out. So if you zoom out too far, if you like come out way too far, you can't see that dip. That's what's happening. This is, this is actually probably the best picture right here. Because look, five units this way is five units this way. Okay? So this is like the real graph right here. And you can see how far it dips down. How far does it go down? Looks like it goes down to about, almost to about negative 10, right? And then comes back up, right? But if you zoom out, it's hard to see that. So when I zoomed out, I was all the way. See now, this is 5, and this isn't negative 5, this is negative 500, right? So now you kind of lose that. Okay, how was that? How did you all feel about that? It's okay? All right, let's do another one. Ah, oh, these are fun. These are so fun. And if you all if can hang... I'd like to maybe do two more of these, maybe three. I want to take us to, to right around 1 o'clock, and I'm gonna, we're going to call it a day.
Okay, so we're going to end a little bit early today, right? We go till 1.30, right? So we go to about 1. If you need, if you absolutely need to go and take a quick break, you can go out, all right? It's, it's up to you, but we're not going to do like an official break. Can you all hang with that? Okay. All right, so now, another one. Now, I'm going to make one up on my calculator. It's just easier to do it this way. Yes, yes. How many problems did you say you're going to give us? I'm probably going to give you maybe like four, four to go home and practice on. Almost done, almost done. What? Oh, I see. All right, here it comes. F of X equals negative X to the fifth plus, I can't read my own thing here, plus X to the fourth plus 21X cubed minus 45X squared. I mean, you have to admit that had I come into class at the you know, beginning of class today and I said, hey, you know, let's sketch that, that'd probably look pretty intimidating, right? And maybe it still does, but we have a process for this. Just ex <coughs> execute the process and let's see how it goes. So first step, Tanisha, what's our first step? And it is, right? Yeah. Okay, so you go ahead and move on to the second step then. Okay, so what's our degree? Five. Five. What's our leading coefficient? Negative. Negative one. All right, you wanna keep going? Okay, so step three is gonna be our end behavior, right? Um, end behavior. So our degree here is odd and our leading coefficient is negative. negative. So what does that tell us, Tanisha? Left up, right down. Left up, right down. Middle, we don't know. Good, everyone clear with that? Dyson? David. Dyson's in the corner. Dave, right? Are you caught up? You good? Okay, next step then, David? Uh, X intercepts, right? Okay, so let's do the X intercepts here. So we have to set this nasty thing to zero, right? Okay. We good? Okay. So at this point, what do we do? So think about factoring. Think about first step, right? GCF. Okay, so what GCF do you see? X squared? Okay. So does everyone agree we can pull an X squared out? Yes. All right. Now, this is the first time we've ever had a negative out front like this. My recommendation when you have a negative in front of your, your leading, like your first term here, is to not pull an x squared, but pull a negative x squared. Okay. And that will help you to deal with the rest of it. So I'm going to pull a negative x squared out. And then, David, if I do that, what, what would still be here if, if you pull a negative x squared out? 
x to the third, but positive, right? And then instead of x to the fourth, it'll be minus x squared, right? Because we need the negative and negative to become the positive. And then instead of 21x cubed, we have minus 21x. And then finally, plus 45, right? Okay. Is everyone with us? Okay. We'll move on to Brianna Garza. How is it? Is this going okay? Okay. How many terms do you have left in here, Brianna? Okay, so what do you do when you have four? Group, okay. Brianna's life is about to suck, okay, because this grouping is gonna, is gonna fall apart. And this is gonna be the first time this has ever happened to us. So I'm gonna do it right here real quick. Brianna, I know, I know you're probably um, comfortable with this. Right, we're supposed to slash that right there. Okay, so what can you pull out of these two? X squared, right? Okay, so we have an X squared, that would leave us with an X minus one. Right, that's what happens if we pull those out of the first two. But then over here, you need it to match, right? Remember we would play this game, X minus one here, and we'd ask ourselves, what do we need here? So what do you need to multiply through here to get back this? It's not happening, okay? This is not happening, do you agree? This is not happening. Now, it does factor, but we don't have a method for doing it. We never learned a method, all right? So at this point, we are stuck, which is why I'd never give you a problem like this. What, what I would do is this, okay? Where's my, I would give you the original function right here, like this. Let me make sure I did that, minus, plus, minus. What I would do, is next, next to this, I would write this out in its factored form. Okay, so what I would do here is put negative x squared. Just make sure I get this right. What the heck? Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. All right, there we go. So, I didn't want to give you this initially, all right, because I wanted you to see why we need it. We work through the problem, degree leading coefficient, left right hand behavior, go for the x intercepts, we get stuck, right? But I gave you the original function in its factored form now. Okay, so Brianna, if I give you that, now can you take on this step, right? Now we don't need this, right? We just go and we set that to zero instead. Is everyone following what I'm, what I'm getting at here? This is a huge gift. I'm not gonna say it's a gift. We just don't cover this in this class. We don't cover how to factor from here to here, so I have to give it to you factored. Okay, so Brianna, if I give you, if I give you this now, and that's here, setting that to zero, are you comfortable setting each of those factors to zero? Yes, okay, so we're gonna set negative x squared equal to zero. Now what about this? We have x minus three and then we have squared. Does that mean I have to do it twice? You can just do it one time because it's the same factor. So just set x minus three equal to zero and then x plus five equal to zero. So Brianna, what are our, what are our, what are our x-intercepts? Zero, three, and negative five. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you alone. I'll leave you alone. Gabriella. You know what we're doing next, Gabriella? Cross and yeah, cross and bounce. So, what are you thinking? for the cross and bounce. We're on step five here. Uh, 
cross balance. So can you tell me, uh, sorry, Gabriella, can you tell me what's going to happen at zero? Will bounce, why? Yeah, because of the power. So this comes from this factor, and because that's an even number, right? Because that's even, we're going to bounce here. You keep going? X3 will bounce. We'll also bounce, right? We're going to bounce at 3 because that's also even. So we're going to bounce here. And then what about at, at negative 5? Cross. Cross. And it's because the power here is a 1. If it's not written, it's a 1. And if it's odd, we're going to cross. Everyone clear with that? So had this been like x to the fourth power, we would bounce. If this had been this, not x to the fourth, if this had been the fourth power, we'd still bounce. If this had been third power, we'd still cross. All right? All right, picture time, picture time. So who's going to be the volunteer to draw the picture off camera on that board for us? Anyone? For two points on the last test? Okay, there you go, Luke. I knew I could get to you, Luke. Here, I'm going to give you a good black pen because it'll show up better. There you go. All right, so Luke's going to draw this for us. Terrible, terrible. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So can you explain to us while you draw this, like how you're going to go about, like what are you going to do first? I'm going to draw my x and y axis. Okay, x and y axis first. And I'm going to put my x intercepts. X intercepts are the, are the thing you go and do next, all right? Okay. They're at zero. I'll let you go. Negative five. While you're doing that, I'm going to draw my own version over here so that we have something on camera. You're there. What does the right side do? What's your end behavior on the right side? It does go down, right? Okay. What do y'all think? I'm letting I'm letting your classmates critique you. That's, that's the punishment you have to have for, for doing, getting two points. I like that. Pardon? Yeah, we don't want to have pointiness to it. We want everything to be curved. So, you know, one thing you can do is this. When you draw this, what I noticed that, <laughs> that, uh, that Luke did a little different, and, and you can do it, I mean, you got it, okay? I always like to kind of just, like I said, real lightly with my pencil, just kind of like put my end behavior in here first. That way I have some general idea of, of how this is going to go. Then I just think, okay, what happens at negative 5 I'm going to cross? So I'm going I'm to kind of do it by hand without drawing it first. I'm going to cross through, right? And then when I get to 0, I'm going to have to bounce. So I bounce off. When I get to 3, I'm going to have to bounce again and then come down. So maybe you can do this, like I know I'm going to bounce there, I know I'm going to bounce there, I know I'm going to cross through here. If you, maybe that'll help you draw it. You come through now and you go, okay, I'm going to cross through, there I'm going to bounce, there I'm going to bounce, and then I'm going to be there. I mean, everyone's got kind of their own way of doing it. That's perfect, yes. All right. Oh, what happened? Why'd you distract me? You try, that's a foul. Yeah, I didn't. I had the x intercept wrong on that one. Okay. Yes? This okay? All right, let's do another example. This one's going to be a little different. No questions? 
I told you it was fun, right, Luke? Yes. All right. <laughs> I like how no one volunteered until I offered the points. That was pretty expected, though. Okay, how about this one? Timothy, you all right? Yeah. This right here is different than anything I've given us, right? Yeah. Because it's factored to start. Like I'm not giving it to you all written out, all stretched out. Does that make sense? So let's just take note of that first. In order for us to get this to, to look like the polynomial that we've been starting with, like all spread out, we'd have to multiply that all out, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we have to do that? Now, I don't think anyone here wants to do x minus 4 times x minus 4 times x minus 4, do you? And I don't think anyone here wants to do x plus 7 times 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 x plus 7, multiply that all out, right? That'd be a pain in the butt. But we need, we need to do something like that because our first step after knowing it's a polynomial, which, which we know that part at least, the next thing is to determine the degree and leading coefficient, right, Timothy? So I'm going to show you a way of doing this. I'll ask you a question when we get to something that you haven't, that you've seen, all right? So the way I'm going to do this is as follows. I'm going to cheat a little bit. It's not cheating, but it's just thinking about what would happen. If I were to multiply, if I were to multiply this out, right now I'm trying to find the degree and the leading coefficient, right? If I were to take that and multiply it times itself three times, just think about what this would look like. You know, I'd have to multiply this, 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 all that, and then after that, multiply again. When you do this, what would be the highest power of x that you would get? Three. three. three third power. So the way you can cheat this and shortcut this is just look at the factor. Look at this right here with the number in front of it. See how that's a 1x? Just take that 1x and cube it. What would happen if you cubed 1x? 1x times 1x times 1x. You get x cubed, right? So what that means is that this, this right here is behaving like an x cubed. It's not exactly x cubed, but that's what it acts like. That's what it behaves like. What would this one be behaving like or acting like? x to the sixth power, because that's like, take that 1x, raise it to the sixth, this is really going to behave like an x to the sixth. Now be careful on this one. What does this one behave like? Just that first piece, which is 2x. This behaves like a 2x. Make sense? Now if you're supposed to multiply all those together, then what would happen if you multiply all these together? What would that behave like? A 2x to what power? How do you get the, that power? What are you going to do? You add up the exponents. This is x to the first power, right? x to the first, x to the cube, x to the sixth. You add 1, 3, and 6, and that would be x to the tenth. So without actually going through all the work, which would have taken us 20 minutes to do to multiply it all out, and we'd probably make a mistake, we just say, look, this really is behaving like a 2x. This is really behaving like an x cubed. This is really behaving like an x to the sixth. So if we were to multiply that out, we would get 2x to the tenth. Now, do you believe that that would happen? Hmm? OK, uh, 2x, what is it, 2x plus 3? x minus 4, and that's cubed, and then x plus 7. 
to the sixth. So I'm going to tell it to expand this. I never use my personal computer. This is my personal computer, but I never do anything on my personal computer other than work, except last night my 15-year-old uh, daughter came up to me and asked me how much la uh, ha uh, laser hair removal costs. Look, it's still here. <laughs> That's why I don't do anything on my, my work computer, because I know I'm going to be in front of a class and I could have something up there, right? <laughs> But I forgot about that last night. I was like, she's like, I want to get laser hair removal. I'm like, you know how expensive that is? You're like, you work part-time minimum wage. I don't think that's happening. OK, so I'm going to expand this. So this is just to convince you that if you were to have multiplied that all out, which the computer just did for me, all right, look at the, uh, look at the first term right there. What's the first term? 2x to the 10th. And everything else is going to be a lower power of x. OK? So that's why we can kind of cheat shortcut. Yes? Do you all like doing it that way, or do you all want to do it by hand? So, you, so could you say, like, as soon as we find out the first one, we just have to worry about the numbers. And then we can, like, every exponent, like, like the x, like, we just subtract one, then the next one subtract another one. Like, you saw how that's x to the 10th. Mm -hmm. Right away, I, I just got to find the number where the 4 is at. But I know, like, um, that's going to be x to the minus because it's x to the 10th. I'm not quite sure well, I'm honestly, following. You know what? In my head, I know what I'm thinking about. OK. So yeah. Really OK. I know what I, I'm thinking about. So we're OK? Yeah, I'm good. OK. So first step was polynomial. Second step, we're going to get back to Timothy now. We wanted the degree. The degree is what? Ten. Degree is 10. So n is 10. Leading coefficient here is 2. Yeah. OK, so third step is the n behavior. Can you just tell me what it is? So left side, up, up right side, up up. up, up, up. OK, so this is up, up. <coughs> Fourth step. Find the x -intercepts. x intercepts. It's factored. Awesome, right? You don't have to do any factoring. You just have to look at these. So for the x intercepts, you're just going to take 2x plus 3, x minus 4 cubed x plus 7 to the 6th, and set it to 0. Do you want to keep going, Timothy? It's your call. I can move on. Uh, so we're going to set each of these equal to 0, right? So 2x plus 3 equal to 0, x minus 4 equal to 0, x plus 7 equal to 0. So negative 7. Negative 7. Positive 4. Positive 4. Get negative 3 over 2. Yep. Okay, so that's going to be negative 3 over 2, which is really negative 1.5. And I'm going to do it as a decimal because I need to put it on an axis somewhere. All right, who wants the next two points on the board? Oh, wait, yeah, you want to do it? Um, what, we may as well finish it out then. Can you tell me what we're going to do at each of these x intercepts? So at, one point, at negative 1.5, am I going to bounce or cross? Cross because because the power is odd, right? This power is odd, so we're going to cross here, and then cross, cross here, bounce. bounce, and that's all coming from even, odd, odd. Everyone good? All right. Why don't you take that here? We'll uh, give you this one. That one over there. So Timothy's starting with the x-intercepts. OK, perfect. Now look, everyone. Uh, oh, yeah, you know what? Get the 4 on there. Sorry, I thought you'd already done the 4. OK, look at what he's done. Notice how he, is not, he has not come in here and said, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7, and negative 1.5. He's not trying to like draw a, a nice dashes. He just makes sure he has them in order from left to right and that the spacing is somewhat reasonable. Are you all okay with his picture? Mm -hmm. I suggest you just do it that way. I don't care about all these dashes in between. Yeah, okay. Make sure they're in the correct order and continue. Now what are you going to do? 
Yeah, okay. So up on the left. Up on the right. Good. Bounced off at negative seven. Yep. No, that's good. That's fine. I mean, you had, you, yeah, would you all give him full credit for that? I give him full credit for that. That's fine. Okay? Good. So that's it. I mean, that's what we're doing, all right? So it's not as bad as it looks like. It looks as, as long as you can factor it, right? As long as you can factor it, then everything should work out hopefully well. So I think at this point what I'll do is I'm going to put the homework problems on the board. All right, you can copy them down and then you're, you're free to go. And then we'll be down, I think, uh, we'll be down to three more lectures. That's it. We have next week, both days, and then we have the following week, only one day, and then a final. All right. Okay, so the first problem is for you to sketch f of x. All of these, you're just going to sketch them, right? Just like we were doing today. x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth minus 40x cubed. Next one is, you can take pictures of these at the end if you don't feel like writing them. Uh, next one is x to the fifth again plus 6x to the fourth minus 4x cubed minus 24x squared. Third one, f of x equals negative 3x to the fourth plus 24x cubed minus 48x squared. And the last one, f of x equals negative 3x plus 6 squared x minus 4 to the fifth x plus 8 to the fourth. All right, so let's say that that's going to be a homework, but I'd like to also collect it as a quiz grade on Monday, all right? All right, 
everyone have a great weekend. Sorry, again, I'm canceling or cutting class short. I'm sure you're very disappointed about that. <laughs>